Action. Hi, what to do and how to do. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you why I switched from Canon, the light side, to Sony, the dark side. So I've been in the market for a new camera for about a year and a half now and at the time I was considering the EOS R and the a7 III. So I rented and tested both cameras but I had to sacrifice something when it came to one or the other. The EOS R had a crop in 4K and besides the full frame look, the image didn't look much different from my 80D. And with the a7 III my biggest gripe was the lack of a flip out screen and the combination of the 8-bit and the Sony colors. So to understand why I switch, you have to understand the type of shooter I am. I'm a 99% video shooter looking for these things in the camera. 4K full frame, great autofocus, 10-bit 422, a small form factor, flip out screen, and better dynamic range than my 80D because that was one of his biggest flaws when shooting outdoors. And after months of going back and forth, I decided to just wait for the new mirrorless releases. And eventually, after refreshing numerous rumor sites about 10,000 times, rumors started circulating about Canon's new R5 and R6. Hearing about this, I was super excited and I pre-ordered the R6 when it became available. I even purchased the 24-105L to lens along with the EF to RF control ring adapter, both which are now sold. And shortly after that, rumors started coming out about the R5 and the R6's overheating issue, but I convinced myself that I can work with the R6 because I only shoot in short bursts anyway. But when Sony announced the A7S III and I saw those specs, along with no overheating issue, I immediately canceled my R6 order and pre-ordered the A7S III. So by now you're probably saying, dude, you're a video shooter, why don't you just get a Canon Cinema camera? And to be honest, I was really considering the C200B, but my biggest issue was the APS-C side sensor, the form factor, and the lack of 10-bit. Now, I probably would have been able to balance it on the Crane 2, but I would be losing touch focus anyway, and mounting the screen on the gimbal defeats the purpose of a small form factor. But now the Canon has announced the C70, am I going to switch back? No. Quite honestly, I was left with a bad taste in my mouth because of the artificial crippling of the R5 and R6. Now, I understand why they did it, but I'm looking for the best bang for buck camera. And although I have some learning to do with this camera's workflow and limitations, in my opinion, the Sony a7S III is the best bang for buck camera. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you took something from it. And if you did, please consider liking, please consider subscribing. And let me know down in the comments below if the C70 is on your radar. And in the next video, we're gonna be talking about third-party software that can help you quickly mix and master your audio.